Sport TV News. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has said that um, it will distribute permanent voter cards uh, and, uh, on, in, in about 13 states between November 7 and November 9. In a statement issued uh, in Abuja some time ago, INEC has also said that there will be continuous voters registration in the affected state from November 13 to 17. Okay, so let's list the states for you now. The affected states are covered under the third phase of the exercise. It includes Adabawa. Questions are still there to know whether this exercise will actually kickstart in that part of the country. Borneo State is also involved. Edo, Imo, Kaduna, Kano, and Kasina. Others are Lagos, Nasarawa, Niger, Ogun, Plateau, and Rivers. Now, there are issues arising, matters indeed arising from the distribution of this permanent voter cards. I'm joined now by a legal practitioner, Barrister Ayo Ade Adebusoye. Barrister Ayo Adebusoye, thank you very much for finding time to join us. Thank you very much. There are disparities in the figures, actually. You overheard the Lagos State Governor asking the INEC how come there was a reduction. We had about 6.2 million registered voters in 2011 and INEC is saying there are just 4.8 voter cards to be distributed. You also recall that sometimes in August INEC also put the figure of registered voters in Lagos. I can't find it now but it was between 5 point something 5.4 million 5 million 426,391. Why the disparities? That we should ask <laughs> Jega in Abuja because and this is very very important because the first step to a successful election in 2015 is what we're doing now is actually having a, a proper voters register and mm. we should remember that in 2011 INEC had assured Lagosians okay. that you know they had done all the uh, check-in and verification mm. validation and removal of uh, double entries and all that mm. and arrived at the figure of 6.2 million and in August as you rightly said they had actually even come out <laughs> yes they had even done uh, more regularization of the, the list and had come out with that 5.4 which they said they were going to use even to uh, uh, as a criteria for adding these new polling units which mm. they've been proposing mm. about 11,000 or so new ones for Lagos State mm. were supposed to get the highest so how do we now arrive at a scenario where between August when you've made this pronouncement, and now we're hearing that 4.8 uh, million pe permanent voter cards are going to be distributed for Lagos. Mm. What is the criteria? And I'm glad the governor, of course, being a lawyer, also said, look, these are issues that INEC needs to explain in layman's terms. There mm. were some things bandied around, like business rules or something, which the REC had mentioned. Yeah. We need to know, like we just need to know exactly why are we having these three different figures. Okay. All from INEC. No, not, not from anybody else, all from INEC. And how do we know it going to come tomorrow, how many actually <laughs> will be actually distributed? And we need to understand the significance of these figures. Even those who voted in Lagos, total number of voters was just over a million and something last elections. Mm. So 1.4 million or, you know, it's not a, a small figure just yeah. to disappear without a trace. And the, the, the fear would be, if persons uh, cannot see their... We, for now, we don't even know whose names are not in the register right. until from tomorrow. Exactly. We'll, presumably, we'll see from Friday. Right. And therefore, we need to interrogate INEC a lot. Or there will be a lot of confusion in the field. Do you, and, do you smell a rat in all of this? Of course, in Nigeria, there's so many rats <laughs> to smell, unfortunately. <laughs> We, we have to give it to uh, the chairman, uh, Terry Jagger of INEC. He has actually, um, so far, we can see it's, it's, it's been working against a lot of odds, okay. basically. Yeah. Uh, 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 but obviously something is not well somewhere mm. in the INEC structure. It's now this has nothing to do with anyone outside INEC. This is all coming from INEC. Why are we having three different figures? It needs to be explained clearly. And I would um, suggest that this is where our representatives in the House, in the National Assembly, the Senate and all, should call Jagger urgently to answer this question. They have the constitutional duty to do that. We, we cannot demand it mm. here directly, and he answered. Mm. But they can, and they should do that very quickly. Because one thing about elections is that justice must be seen to be done, not just done. It must be free and fair, and people must accept 
That's true. That it is indeed we, free. We cannot have a situation where over a million people are disenfranchised just mm. like that. Mm. Then what about further down the line? This is the third phase of the exercise. I believe the final phase. Yes. And um, the first two cases were also characterized by quite a number of complaints from people. Would you agree that seven to nine, three days? Of course, the Lagos State Government has already declared a work free day for Friday. But the last time it happened in Oyo, people complained that Absolutely. those three days were not enough. Absolutely. Don't, don't you think that should be checked? Definitely those days are not enough. I mean, the governor declared a public holiday for civil servants. How many civil servants are there in the total population of Lagos? We're talking over 20 million. Now, if we say, okay, let's say half, 10 million of, you know, voting age. Okay, now we've, we've now got the figure of 4.8 million. That's right. 4.8 million voters to descend in th within three days, uh, knowing that the first day is not like things are going to be up by 8 o'clock. It doesn't work like that. It's going to be delayed before things are set up in the various polling units. We need to be realistic. I know, and I don't know who planned that, where it came from, but definitely three, three days is not enough. There's going to have to be an extension or we'll see, again, more confusion and more dissatisfaction. This exercise is only for people who have registered before. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, whose name are in the register of voters mm -hmm. that are displayed. Mm -hmm. And people who That's also true. have a temporary voter card. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps who have lost them but have um, stuff to prove mm -hmm. that, indeed, they have registered before. Mm -hmm. uh, this, all of those processes in a country that is so economically challenged where people would rather go to fend for their families Absolutely. than think about getting a card. Mm. How do you perceive this? Mm. How, what success do you see us gathering from this? Well, I think what you mentioned about the economic aspect may have um, led INEC to maybe put in two of those days on the weekends. Mm. Um, well, we'll, it's, we'll, we're soon going to see how successful that is. Definitely three days is not enough for Lagos State. Uh, even with the weekends, we know uh, Lagos State, there's a lot of activities that people do on weekends. You know, Sunday for many is like off, you know, except maybe after after church. And, and Saturdays, mm. especially in Lagos State, we know how intense the social life is. Now, I mean, we may say, yes, this is everybody's civic duty. Not everybody has that appreciation. For many registered voters for many nigerians we, we the belief is that look uh, politics is a done deal uh, whatever they want to do they're <laughs> going to do and so mm. many of them many people don't get involved that's why even out of the 6.2 that were registered previously only over a million voted voted actually to vote. so mm. many of them just take the card because maybe they'll need it somewhere maybe some people may, may ask demand for it many don't have that understanding that this is the process for actually getting involved in the governance of your state, of your country. So, and that's one of the things we need to, like, people become very much aware that, look, this is very key. The first step in voting is getting your permanent voters card. And therefore, there needs to be that more awareness. Unfortunately, we're not seeing much Would of Would you that. say ANIC is doing no, much? Because I have not even seen ANIC jingles on the station where I work. No, and why? Because the budgets are from Abuja. And this is one of the things we've been talking about, this centralized, over-centralization of everything in Abuja. So because everything is centralized in Abuja, they, they, the various uh, uh, state offices cannot even decide to even have their own media uh, mm -hmm. budget by themselves. Mm -hmm. It has to come from there. And of course, it's limited. So for, as of now, as we speak, hardly anybody has seen anything on on the elections, on the, uh, sorry, on the uh, P PVC distribution mm -hmm. yet, even mm -hmm. though it's about a day to it. Mm -hmm. Now, Lagos State, I think, has done one or two jingles, just the state government by itself. But INEC hasn't. Because for the budget reasons and mm. it's a real challenge so many people are not aware even as we speak of the whole essence of the pvc dispute that it's even going to happen many are not it's just a few of you <laughs> who are involved or engaged in governance and who mm. are interested in things of governance the mark and five people don't know anything's happening again the political parties have a role to play and they haven't played it yet mm. I think they're so involved with the defections and all that <laughs> counter defection but they're actually the ones who should be spearheading awareness about you know voters uh, uh, registration and you know collecting your permanent voters card mm. and that's one area we need to see the political parties stepping up more. It's all right. Mm. Then let's quickly just uh, move ahead to look at the characteristics of this PVC. A smart card based voter ID mm. stores voters' information such as bio data, biometrics, and facial image. The card technology provides adequate security features to reduce vulnerability 
to counterfeiting. Mm -hmm. And it shall also be used for identification and authentication of uh, voters during elections. Is this the cure to voter rigging in well, Nigeria? Well, I suppose it's a start. I mean, of course, this one, I don't think has the MasterCard like the national <laughs> ID. <laughs> yeah. But I think the real thing is that at least they're going in a step in the right direction. I mean, we can't get there you know, completely, but at least whatever we can do to make the whole process more secure, I think we need to... But shouldn't all these things should have just been collapsed together? I mean, if we have national ID differently, Absolutely. and then we have Absolutely. voters' cards... I mean, we've got the, your national ID differently, mm. we've got your driving license, mm. which there's still debate of who should do that. You've got this one. I, definitely that's the way it's going to go. Ultimately, I'm sure something's going to have to step back for something. Is either this one or the... We can't have all these ID cards all having the biometric features and, you know, at the same time. Mm. Uh, I think it's something which, going down the line, not now, because they, ha they still haven't got it yet. Mm. Our national ID card, we see how it's stalling. We don't know what's happening. We're seeing pre-registration going on. So I think this seems to be the more urgent one since every four years there's a need for it. Mm. And so I think this may even be the, could be the, actually the best way of even starting to get some kind of coherent database going. If once we can verify the, the authenticity yeah, of all of know, this. Especially with these uh, various figures, varying figures coming out from the same source. Mm. But once we can have it stabilized, I think this could be um, at least a, a, a core of being able to get a national database. Let's Which, quickly touch on the legal perception of all of this. What is the right of a Nigerian as we get voting being voted for and even in the area of collecting and having a permanent mm. voter card? Well, of course, the Constitution guarantees that every Nigerian citizen has a right to vote, you know, has a right to participate in the governance of this country. And, of course, the age is pegged at 18 for now. Uh, but we've been advocating that to be voted for, <coughs> there shouldn't be, <coughs> like, all the various age limits. If you're old enough to vote, you should be old enough to be voted for. Okay. Whatever your age limit, let <laughs> the electorate decide mm. on, on, on that. So, but for now, every Nigerian should understand that this is one of the rights that he has, and it's, that's why the PVC is free. Okay. Uh, it's given free. And they should go and, and get it if they've registered before. Mm. And um, I, I think it's something which everybody needs, especially more so now where there's so many issues at stake. And the only way, constitutionally, that we can make a change in governance is by voting. Okay. You know? So I think it's really uh, critical. And before you can vote, you have to have your permanent voters card. So I think it's very critical that at least we take that step. Even though we know there's a lot of inertia, Skepticism, <coughs> mistrust amongst the citizens, yeah, and for very obvious reasons. Mm. But this is the only real constitutional process that we have. Mm. The step, first step to prepare for 2015 elections is to get that permanent voters. I, I was checking through the guidelines of the INEC made possible to Section 16 of the Electoral Act 2010. And one part caught my attention. If the prospective voter is suspected to be underage, his or our PVC shall be retained at the LGA office. Mm. How do you know if someone is under 18 under the law? The, what they will say is bring your birth certificate. <laughs> That's what they will say. Um, uh, and of course, we saw some uh, previous elections anyway, where some people saw on the TV who obviously looked quite uh, young. Yes. And, you know, we've had all kinds of scenarios in the past now where people registered Mohammed Ali and all the kinds of registrations <laughs> were going on. Mike you know, Tyson. Mike Tyson and all that. You know, so we've had all kinds of ages uh, doing all kinds of things. So definitely there has to be some. But I think the only legal way you could have that is uh, they ask them to produce their birth certificate once there's doubt. Um, otherwise, it's something which a uh, lot of it will be discretionary. Because, you know, here we don't, most people who come, you just, they just ask you how old are you and you tell them. Mm. Yeah. So. In the third phase of this distribution exercise, Adamawa is also involved. And do you Bono, foresee, <laughs> and Bono as well, do you, do you foresee any of this exercise taking place? Especially as Boko Haram, you know, already threatened that um, no voting exercise would take place in those areas. Yes, they are anti-voting, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and what's happening now is that, as uh, mentioned by the governors there, but eight local governments in Bono are... Uh, firmly under the control of Boko Haram in Adamawa. You've seen the second largest movie totally under the control of... So I think we need to be realistic that... Uh, and that's why I kept on saying that the focus, everybody, the country, the government, every citizens, political parties, everybody needs to come together and get behind and focus mm. on dislodging uh, the insurgency. It should be just a focus, forget all the 
partisan politics, it's not going to work. Otherwise, you won't be able to do anything. And if those states, all those states, you can't conduct elections there, there's a lot of effects because then you how would you, how do you have presidential elections yeah. without? It's a, it may even be more than three states because we're hearing of what's happening in Gombe now. Yeah. That they've taken over some factories, the insurgents, and all that. They're they're making more and more um, inroads everywhere. So it's something which is so critical. Well, is there any provision of the law that states that if the security cannot be guaranteed, that such exercise should not take place? That, that's you know this way. There's going to be a lot of debates in courts because of course now technically they're under state of emergency, and in fact that state of emergency will need to be renewed fairly soon. Mm -hmm. And by the time that happens. They may have to dislodge all these democratic structures because okay. it's not even working. Even though it, in theory they're supposed to be there, mm. it's not happening. You know, mm. in all those uh, already, there's nothing. There's nothing like uh, democratic structures in place in all those uh, local governments in those states, mm. and it's still going to continue okay. like that. And and if we has this way, they're going to expand. So I, I think it's critical that we address that because those will be some constitutional issues that will come up. That what happens in those states where you can't go there, mm. you know what's going to happen and how does that affect the credibility of the whole exercise would you say the presidential election because you're supposed to be uh, two-thirds you know have a certain percentage of votes in two-thirds of your 36 states mm. how's that going to f so it's going to create a whole different angle of uh, of uh, legal complexities if it's not addressed because mm. what's going to happen is that INEC is going to try attempt to to carry out but it's going to be obvious that they won't be able to do it in most of the local governments, in those, maybe they could just do it in the capitals, hmm. in Maiduguri, in you know, in uh, Yola, like and that. And would that now be counted as so for the old where, state? And you can imagine, and unfortunately, those are the states that the opposition party even has majority. So you can imagine that. Um, there are school of thoughts so that issues. possibly Nigeria should first set to the insecurity Absolutely. issue before going into a general election. No, but then the, the, that leads to other complications. <laughs> do you have an interim government? What do you mm. how what do you call it? Mm. You know that would now be that's even going to be more complicated. Mm. Ideally, if we had some kind of scenario that could work that, but it won't now. It won't work because it won't. People won't buy it. They would say it's a tenure legation, tenure extension. They call it whatever it is, and that will have a backlash. But definitely. The focus now, there should be a total 100% focus on dislodging and degrading the Boko Haram. What states. about the internally displaced persons in this area? But there yes. are, Nema just said there are about over 740,000. And if Nema says that... All official reports have it that there are even millions. Now, obviously, I mean, I mean, if you know now, in mm. Nigeria, the official reports are always under because how many people report things, how many people go through the proper channels. Most times in Nigeria, we don't report to the proper channel. So if they're saying 700, you could time that by two or three. And, you know, we need to understand that is a, another issue, a challenge, because those, many of them are registered voters. Many mm. of them should vote. What's going to happen? Uh, where are they going to vote? They are disenfranchised. Because we cannot see, at the rate they're going, this unfortunate scenario in, this, in the country now, the security forces are right now on a retreat, mm. for whether you like it or not. Mm. They may say whatever. They, but what's happening is that these guys are making inroads, insurgents, and they've continued mm. till now. So I think it's really critical that that is addressed. Okay before we think of any other thing. It's all right. Um, just uh, before we round up now, there are also stories and insulations going around as regards the 2015 general elections. But uh, uh, why should people go out to vote? Because whether we like it or not, this is the last phase of the exercise. Between 7th and 9th of this month, INEC will go all out to distribute this vote as card. Over the time we've been discussing on this platform, why people should be actively involved in who leads them and even in electoral processes as we count down to the election yeah absolutely and, and unfortunately there are many people in nigeria who say well they don't like politics politics is dirty business whether you like it or not our lives are affected by political decisions the power shortage that is prevalent no power mm. the security situation we've been discussing that's right it's all because of political decisions mm. the corruption children dying mm. children not going to school they're all as a result of political decisions. And every citizen has a right, once you're a citizen of this country, That's right. to participate in the political sphere mm. by voting. And you can't vote if you don't have a voter's card. Mm. So one thing comes to another. There's no point complaining in the bear parlor. That would not help. Or by the newspaper stand, as we do. Or by calling in on the show, like <laughs> we always do here. We need to understand that if we to direct way we can influence things is by voting. You know, and whether we like to at least the elections have started having some 
semblance of credibility over the last few elections we've been having recently. And so, and that's democracy for you. Bill Clinton, former president, mentioned that democracy is like a raft. It goes slowly, and like, but it will be going that direction. Yeah. But military dictatorship is like a speedboat. It goes very fast, you know, emergency rule, but bam, yeah. it can crash very easily. So gradually we're getting there where at least elections, if we can have that confidence that votes are being counted. That's right. I think that's where we're going. And we all need to get participate in that process. Hi, you are so you Thank you very much for mm -hmm. finding time to join us. Ayoade Busoye, he is a legal practitioner as well as a public affairs and analyst. Well, INEC is going all out to uh, conclude the third phase of the exercise, registration exercise in about 13 states of the Federation. It's happening in Adamawa, in Bornu, in Edo, in Imo, Kaduna, Kano, Kasina, Lagos, others in Nasarawa, Niger, Ogo, Plateau, and River State. Of course, if you would have to change anything, it starts here you must get the PVC force. But when we come back on the show today, we'll be looking at the chances of the less, the physically challenged uh, in the area of even to be voted for, and as well as engaging actively in the voting exercise. Stick around, it's called cool Digest Thursday, don't go away. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, Emoten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. It's a beautiful Saturday evening in the city of Migo. Models. Five to shoot. Leonard does. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. TV News, expanding your view.
population live with one disability or the other. So Nigeria too has its own lion's share. Now the big question is as we come down to the 2015 elections, what are the chances of the people living with disabilities in the area of being voted for in political offices and even actively participating in who leads politically? I'm joined now on set by Dr. Adebukola Adebayo. He is the Director of Research and Programs, Disability Policy and Advocacy Initiative. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you very much for finding time to join us. Yeah, nice to meet you. What exactly would you say are the challenges of Nigerians living with disabilities, especially as it relates to electoral processes in the country? Uh, well, I, I think um, uh, it's where we did that just society. Uh, people with disabilities are largely excluded from virtually everything. Um, you know, we uh, were talking about the elections, mm. um, beginning from issues around, you know, belonging to political parties, okay. um, taking part in campaigns, voter education, and, and even up to the uh, activities around voting mm. in elections. Um, there is virtually no provisions to accommodate the needs of people with disabilities in these processes. And this has been so up till now, even though the Electoral Act 2010 has amended, and the 1999 Constitution provides that uh, every every citizen mm. should be accommodated. You know, so but as far as people with disabilities are concerned, we are faced with you know challenges, including um, the various institutional processes, the infrastructures are not there, the 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 attitude of people in government, electoral officials, and so on, yeah. are also very exclusive. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the list is endless. Mm. But beyond all of that, would you say that you as an individual lacks in any capacity whatsoever to lead well, in the, Nigeria? Is, we, we have excelled in various fields, you know, in, uh, in, in all of our chosen fields, in the media, in the private sector, in business, mm. in politics. Well, I would say that it's not as if we are on ground zero. Mm. We've had people with disabilities appointed into political offices in, in mm. various states. Mm. We've, we've, uh, we've had people on wheelchair in the National Assembly, or with one form of physical disability or the other in the National Assembly. Mm. The, the uh, current uh, governor, uh, Al Makura of uh, Nasarawa State now, yeah. is uh, partially deaf. Yeah. You know, so we have people with disabilities. Disabilities does not mean you can't perform, you know, leadership roles. Okay. But because of the stigma, the discrimination, and mm. the the lack of access, mm. you know, it makes it difficult for people with disabilities, you know, to generally participate in social political activities. What role has the government played in all of this? Well, I think the government has the responsibility to ensure that every citizen, you know, has equal opportunities. To participate in the political process, but because the government has refused to, you know, enact and implement relevant laws and policies, yeah. for instance, Nigeria is a signatory to the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. Nigeria ratified this convention in 2010, and we are supposed to have, you know, uh, enacted a, a, a local legislation to implement this convention. Yeah. But up to now. The National Assembly are yet to pass any legislation on disability. However, in Lagos State here, um, the state is you know, leading that uh, pact by having passed the uh, uh, disability law in 2011 in line with the UN Convention. So, ditto with some other states that are also, you know, trying to replicate what Lagos State, you know, has done. Yeah. So, we, we, the government has that responsibility to create the enabling environment. Okay. Now, when you talk about the electoral process, the, the electoral law is supposed, I mean, the, the voting, for instance, every citizen is supposed to have access to the voting process. But people with disabilities, I mean, the INEC uh -huh. has you know, not made this possible because they are not making necessary provisions in terms of policy, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of personnel uh -huh. to, you know, to attend to access. okay but what has been the relationship that you've enjoyed thus far with other citizens especially as regards to this electoral matters 
Well, I think what we are doing now, with the support of uh, some development partners, including the DFID, through its uh, State Accountability and Voice Initiative, okay. we are you know, we've been conducting advocacy in the beginning of this year to uh, clamor for inclusiveness in the electoral process. Yeah. And uh, we did a desk review. You know, we have to start from the point of knowledge to you know to pro pro provide evidence okay. you know of how it is done in other countries even countries as close as Ghana yeah. here you know we have to provide evidence and in, in doing that we, we met with stakeholders in various parts of the country including the southwest here and in, in Abuja and we produced what we call the monitoring checklists you know on, on inclusive election this to serve as a guide for INEC for uh, citizens and for all stakeholders, for political parties in the ele electoral process, to know how to m mainstream inclusion and people with disabilities into the process. So we did that, you know, and um, presented it to INEC in July. Okay. And um, just recently, uh, th early this week, we produced and uh, presented to the media uh, 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 an, uh, an, an inclusive uh, voter education material, okay. you know, including flyers, media jingles that people with disabilities can have access to. I have with me here a braille copy of a, 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 a flyer, okay. uh, 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 an awareness you know, uh, raising flyer on you know, voter education as it relates to this um, 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 collection of voter car, uh, permanent voter cards and continuous voter registration that is about to begin tomorrow. Before now, things like this never existed. In fact, this is the first time in Nigeria's history that people like me will have access mm. to information that INEC is producing and giving out to the public. Okay. This is the first time that the deaf will have access to media jingles on voter education. Okay. You know, all of these are things that have been done in other countries years before now, even in Ghana. Mm. But here in Nigeria, it is taking us time to, you know, to, uh, 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 to mainstream all of these issues. Have you ever voted before in any of the elections in Nigeria? Well, somehow, it's not as if we have been apolitical. A lot of us have always struggled to participate, you know. Uh, let me paint a scenario. Okay. I, as a blind person, will go to a polling unit with someone who will have to guide me in printing the ballot. Okay. Now, the risk in doing that is that the, the, my guide <laughs> may have affiliation to an opponent or and to make a, you a vote for and make his me own vote, party. And there's no way I can verify that. Hmm. So the independence and secrecy of my vote is, is, is eroded. Hmm. But there are very simple you know, uh, 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 processes that can be put in place, like the tactile ballot guide. It's just like a cardboard. You insert the, it will have been carved in the shape of the vo uh, ballot paper okay. with, you know, uh, embossed dust, just like this braille okay. material I'm holding here, okay. you know. And once I insert the ballot paper into that uh, frame, that cardboard frame, mm. it, you know, there are openings that will show me where I am to put my thumbprint. Okay. And of course, because I've been briefed on the, no the, the, the shapes of the, of, the, of the party logo okay. and the number, Mm. It falls on on the on the on the something, so I will know where to put my you know, my thumbprint, mm. and my vote will be valid, and it will be secret, and I'll have done that independently. Mm. So these are very simple processes. You don't need any serious technology. You understand? So long as we are not doing e-voting yet. So if we see the manual ballot that we are doing, is, is, these things are possible. Is INEC in the know as regards this innovation? Well, in view of our advocacy, I will say that there is some um, level of. Uh, 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 acceptance okay. by INEC. For instance, the the, the promise that they were, we are going to adopt the uh, man, uh, checklist that we produce mm -hmm. for them, and the engagement is still on. You know, we are only in Lagos with the support of, of DFID. We are trying to demonstrate these things. Okay. Like this, is the first time we are having flyers, you know, uh, uh, voter education flyers in Braille. So we are demonstrating the process to them, mm -hmm. showing them that these things are possible. And we hope that you know the, the the leadership of INEC at national level will imbibe these practices because these are best practices. Because if you have 10 percent or 20 percent of the voting population with disabilities, and the problem is that in the uh, have an issue, INEC is not even capturing the the, the populations with voters of vo or voters with disabilities in their database mm. during voter registrations. There are no sections in the in the registration procedures that, where they ask you whether or not you are living with any form of disability, you know, and what type of disability. Because they have all of this. 
they will know how to deploy materials that voters with disabilities require in, okay. in, in, in performing their civic responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But we are hoping that as we continue the advocacy with the support of our development partners and all stakeholders, we, 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 they, we, they will begin to, there will be you know, a gradual change in, in the process. Why is it that we've not had persons living with special challenges like these coming up to contest? Well, you, you, one, one thing is that more than 80% of people with disabilities are, you know, belong to the, the poorest of the poor population. And uh, even those that are in the elite face a lot of discrimination in the system. We also remember that Nigeria's election is still tilting towards the violent side. Mm. So, and all of these factors discourage people with disabilities, even to go and vote. Mm. The, 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 the tendency that of violence will discourages a lot of people because if there is violence, a person of wheelchair cannot take to his heels. Mm. He will become a victim. You know, so all of these things discourage people. But however, it is because our elections are too costly, are too expensive. Yeah. You know, the task, even the average Nigerian citizen who does not belong to the elite class, who have not really stolen money one way or the other, okay. I'm not saying it's all politicians that have stolen money, mm. but you know, majority of them have their hands stained in corruption. Yeah. They have access to public funds with which they are using to pros uh, prosecute their, their, their political ambition. Mm. So a lot of us are not belonging to, those, to that system, mm. and that's why we are asking that political, we within the disability community, we, we, we have the power. There's what you call social mobilization. Okay. If I mobilize my families and friends to vote in a particular direction, mm. and if over one million of us, as we are in Lagos State, can do so, you, you can imagine what that, so if we don't have the resources financially, I think we have the, 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 the demographic capacity to, you know, to politically change you know, things in our favor. So, are you saying there are about a million people in Lagos? Yes, with disabilities. Who can vote? Who, 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 who are of voting age? Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So, and that's why we are looking at the alternative of socially mobilizing ourselves and you know, empowering us, you know, using that uh, uh, advantage of population to, to really move things in our direction. Okay. Because uh, sorry for cutting you short there, but this answer really might not have anything to do with voting. But yeah. um, what exactly, because when Nigerians see people like you, who is a PhD doctor, uh, uh, a PhD holder rather, yeah. uh, and then you notice that um, quite a number of people who have such challenges are probably on the street begging arms and all of that. What, what steps have you taken to ensure that um, the government's attention is directed to that. That is why, for instance, I can speak of Lagos State very well. That is why in Lagos State we have a Lagos State Special People's Law. Okay. And that law is not just existing on paper, it is being implemented. Mm. The agency that's supposed to implement the law has been established, that's Lagos State Office of Disability Affairs. Mm. And it's headed by a person with disability. You understand? Yeah. So, in, in, in that law, there are provisions to empower people with disabilities. Okay. to ensure that they are productive. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. And so, if all of these things begin to take shape, I believe that in Lagos State, you will see less of people begging on the streets. Okay. You see less of persons with disabilities begging. It is because, you see, when a person with disability goes to school and he is not employed, mm. do you understand what I'm saying? He has no other thing to turn to. But if he is employed or empowered to be productive, then he will contribute. Nobody mm. likes to go on the street to beg. Even people without disabilities, I have, my, I have given arms to people without disabilities myself before severally on the streets. Mm. Because people, when they are not employed and they don't want to go into crime or whatever, they resort to begging. So it is the responsibility of government to ensure that the citizens are economically empowered to be productive. It pays the government, it pays the society, it pays everybody because if that large chunk of people are productive, they will pay tax. Mm. They will, they will, some of them will even become employers of labor. And we will be contributing to the growth and development of the society. So it's because governments are failing across board, both at state, local, and national levels in this country. That's why you keep seeing people on the streets begging. It's the height of poverty, it's the height of unemployment. But, but if there mm. are systems okay. created 
to accommodate people. I think it will, it will reduce the, the trend. How will you describe the level of discrimination? Very high. As far as Nigeria is concerned, very high. Hmm. You, you feel it everywhere you go. You feel discriminated everywhere you go in this country. In government, in the public, the private sector, even in the family. Hmm. But I think with the, uh, with the contributions of media organizations like yours, we, we will begin to you know, reduce the, the, the attitude, the negative attitude of discriminating against people you know, with disabilities. Because when you know that that person can be productive, mm -hmm. and, you know, and when it becomes productive, it reduces the burden on the family. It okay. reduces the burden on the society, on government, and every, you know, everybody is happy. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's a, it's, it's a process. It's a process that uh, we must, the campaign must go on, and the media organizations, all stakeholders, religious organizations, all of us, our hands must be on deck, you know, to campaign to, against discrimination, you know, even against anybody, let alone people with disability. Mm. Nobody is to, is, is, should suffer any form of discrimination whatsoever. Well, we've discussed um, what the role of government is, but then, as we come down to 2015 now, what exactly do you think the role of the Nigerian people are in ensuring that um, people living with some sort of disabilities are not disenfranchised? Well, that, that, that is why we in the civil society produce media jingles to show that people with disabilities you know, can you know, also be informed. I think it begins with us, as I mean, we with disabilities ourselves. Mm. I, I just told you about the social mobilization approach to this mm. process. Okay. We must mobilize ourselves, mm. and that's why we have the materials in Braille, okay. in sign in language interpreted media jingles, mm. so that we'll be aware. So we we'll reduce the ignorance within our own community of persons with disabilities. And then we can mobilize support from the larger society, beginning from our families and friends. You say charity begins at home. Mm. In the last 2011 elections, I was able to mobilize over 200 members of my families and friends to vote in a particular direction. Mm. So uh, that makes me relevant in mm. the political party that I belong. Mm. You know, it gives me some level of relevance and recognition mm. that, oh, I can mobilize this number of votes. Mm. So I think it begins with us to really drive the process. Mm. It's not for the society. It's, this is not about sympathy. Politics is not about sympathy, it's about the strength you have. Mm. And if you don't have the financial muscle to contribute or, 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 or to buy uh, any politician, then you must use your vote. And mm. that's what the people have. Mm. And that's what we with disabilities are beginning to understand that we must use and use rightly. Okay. But um, uh, bringing all of these enshrined in the Nigerian law at the legislative level, how far do you think this country has gone? Well, we, I just told you earlier that even though we have ratified and signed the Convention on Rights of People with Disabilities, that's the UNCRPD, yeah. we are, by that convention, supposed to enact a local legislation okay. on disability, which we are yet to do at the national level. And that's a big gap. And if you also look at the Electoral Act, you will also realize that it just personally mentioned that, oh, persons with disabilities uh, will be provided for... You know, I can't quote the, the, I mean, the relevant sections verbatim mm, now, mm. but the provisions in the Electoral Act is not substantial enough to guarantee inclusion and access of persons with disabilities. But so are you aware that there is an ongoing constitutional review, even, even as it regards um, Electoral Act? Yes, we, we Are made, you not taking in, advantage of we that? Did, we did make input into all of these processes. Mm. We've not turned our back on all of this. We've been actively involved. I have been involved in the review of the, of the Constitution. I have been involved in the review of the Electoral Act. Okay. We, you know, we participated at the level of civil society mm. and we made input. But okay. it's one thing to make input, it's another for those in power to, you know, to take in those input. Mm. And that is why we are saying that we can't but fall back on our numeric strength okay. as a politically sensitive population. Mm. Because if the politicians know that we can mobilize votes, you know, to determine who gets into the office. I think we will be taking more seriously. And that is what we are, you know, moving on 
you know, this time around. Okay, it's all right. Dr. Debukola Debayo, thank you very much for the time much. to join us today on Call Digest. He is a director of research and programs of disability policy and advocacy initiative. We're going to take our discussion on the involvement of INEC in all of this to another level. We hope to be joined by the INEC um, resident commissioner tomorrow on Call Digest. But we'll take a short break now. And we'll be back with more. I understand that we're having little challenges with the phone lines, but keep trying in case we can take some of your calls before we go on the show today. Join us again. Has it been a difficult task for you to purchase exquisite, classic, durable and sturdy furniture that will last the test of time? Here is good news for you. Purchase high quality furniture for your household, offices, hotels and schools at Prince Interior Furnishing and Furniture Company Limited. Office address, Goshen Plaza, Showroom 28, Kubo Furniture Market, AYA, Nyanya Road, Abuja. Telephone 0803-119-144. Double four or zero nine two nine one seven four eight two. Email Prince Emeka two four zero at yahoo.com. Info at princeinterior.com. Website www.princeinterior.com. Purchase your furniture at Prince Interior Furnishing and Furniture Company Limited. Classic, strong, exquisite. TV News, expanding your view. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. From time immemorial, women have bet life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as a wife, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. The dailies every day on Core TV News. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station.